Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, I'm very glad to have with us Vaishnavi Nair. She earned her bachelor's and master's degrees in chemistry from the Indian Institute of Science, Education, and Research, Bhopal, in 2016, where she worked under the supervision of Professor Alakesh Bisai. She then joined the Tambar Group at UT Southwestern Medical Center, where she's currently pursuing a PhD. Her work is focused on the development of new catalytic reactions for organic synthesis, as well as the total synthesis of natural products. And with that, I'll hand it over to you, Vaishnavi. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Matt, for the introduction and for giving me the opportunity to share my recently published research in the Tumblr Lab at UT Southwestern Medical Center. As you can see from the title of my presentation, this research is focused on rearrangements of indole-based onumulates that we were able to develop in a catalyst-controlled manner. I would like to begin my talk with an introduction to onumulates which are these zwitterionic intermediates with the carbanion directly attached to a heteroatom such as a nitrogen, phosphorus, or sulfur with a formal positive charge. Now, these are highly reactive intermediates that can undergo a variety of transformations. For instance, the allylic onumulate shown here typically undergo 2, 3, or 1, 2 rearrangements forming new carbon-carbon bonds that give these functionalized allylic compounds. And typically, these elites are formed by base-mediated deprotonation of the corresponding salts, which is one of the drawbacks because this requires the pre-formation of the salts in order to generate the elites. The second drawback about this base-mediated approach is that it's not a general method applicable to all salts. For example, it's not a suitable method for oxonium salts because they undergo dealkylation under basic conditions. And third and most importantly, the control of selectivity between rearrangements using this method is challenging. One way to overcome these challenges is to form these onumulates in a catalytic manner with metal catalyst using diazo compounds and an appropriate nucleophile to form metal coordinated onumulates that can do similar type of rearrangements. Several groups have used this catalytic method, especially in allylic systems, to do selective rearrangements. An advantage of this approach is that now you can think of using the catalyst to control the selectivity between the rearrangements. A previous work from our group has shown such an example with allylic iodonium elites in the presence of two different copper ligand systems that selectively gave the 1, 2, and 2, 3 rearrangement products in a regiodivergent fashion with high region diastereo selectivities. But even though there are so many examples of such catalytic rearrangements in allylic systems, when we move to aromatic or heteroaromatic systems, there are not many reports known in literature. This is of course challenging, especially in the case of 2-3 rearrangements, where you essentially have to disrupt the aromaticity to do the rearrangement. And at the same time, the 1-2 rearrangement is generally less efficient process as it's symmetry forbidden. A few examples of such rearrangements have been recently shown in literature, mostly in the context of sulfonium alerts that are relatively stable. But the selectivity of the rearrangements is mainly substrate and solvent controlled, limiting the scope of these reactions. And as we move to systems other than sulfonium elites, such as oxonimals, for example, these are comparatively highly reactive than sulfur or nitrogen analogs. Oxonium elites are usually less stable, and if they cannot find a pathway to do productive rearrangement reactions, they can easily dissociate to the starting carbonoid and ether and do other non mediated side reactions, such as CH insertion or cyclopropanation, which are well known with carbon chemistry. And probably because of these reasons, there are not many examples in literature with these type of intermediates. The only few reports of 1-2 rearrangement known are limited to cyclic oxonium elites, whereas there are no examples at all for aromatic 2-3 rearrangements using oxonium elites. So this is definitely an area that is underdeveloped, and we believe developing catalytic methods to access these products through such reactive intermediates will be really useful from a synthetic perspective. With that in mind, we started thinking about such catalytic rearrangements in the context of indole functionalization as an initial target, mainly because it's such a biologically relevant scaffold that is present in a variety of pharmaceutically active compounds. For this, we imagine generating oxonimulates, as shown here, from the corresponding indole carbonyl and diazo compound, which could potentially undergo rearrangements to give functionalized indoles. 
Ideally, that's what we envision doing, but um, there are a couple of other competing pathways that can happen here considering the reactivity of indoles with metal carbonoids that's been well studied. For example, Diazo compounds can react with indoles to do CH insertion or NH or OH insertions as well as cyclopropanation on the indole ring. So selective formation of the illid will be very important to get the desired reactivity that we need. With that, we did our initial screening with indole 3-carbonyl and a diazo ester in presence of a copper catalyst that we previously used in our analytic idonium illid chemistry. But we did not observe any rearrangement products at all under these conditions. Instead, we isolated this OH insertion product, which seemed to be competing with the illid formation and rearrangement. So we switched from the free alcohol to the corresponding methyl ether, as well as protected the indole with the tosyl group to stabilize it from eliminating of the ether. And with this new substrate, we were very excited to see the formation of the corresponding 1, 2, and 2, 3 rearrangement products with a moderately high reduced selectivity favoring the 1, 2 rearrangement. And interestingly, the deuterometive 2, 3 rearrangement product was isolated as a single diastereomer under this condition, which was stable against rearomatization to the corresponding indole, which was really encouraging for us. And after screening a couple more copper catalysts, we found that the optimized condition with copper hexafluoroacac and an excess diazoester gave the 1-2 rearrangement product with good yield and high regio selectivity. Then we focused our attention to see if we can switch the selectivity in order to favor the 2-3 rearrangement product. Unfortunately, screening various other catalysts that are used in carbon chemistry, such as palladium, silver, or gold catalysts, fail to give us any rearrangement products at all. Luckily, when we used rhodium acetate as the catalyst, we saw a complete switch in radio selectivity to keep the 2-3 rearrangement product. But the yield for the reaction was really low, and we figured out that the product reacts further with the diazoester to give this cyclopropanated spirocyclic side product. To suppress the side reaction, we had to lower the equivalence of the diazoester, which increased the yield to 42%, and we were able to recover the unreacted starting material back as the reaction didn't seem to go to full conversion. We did try a variety of other conditions with different rhodium catalysts and solvents, but we did not observe any improvement in the yields in any of the cases. We also tried other diazo compounds, such as this diester that forms stabilized acceptor acceptor type carbenes, which did not show any reactivity under our conditions. And when we tried diazo compounds that form donor acceptor carbenes, as shown here, the ILAT formation was suppressed by competing CH insertion and cyclopropanation pathways. So, with the optimized conditions for both 1, 2, and 2, 3 rearrangements, we decided to look at the substrate scope of this regiodivergent approach that we developed. In terms of the 1-2 rearrangement, we were able to show the applicability of the conditions on a variety of electron-rich and electron-poor indole substrates, as well as other alkyl and aryl diazoesters. For the 2-3 rearrangement, the yields were comparatively lower as expected from the optimized result. However, we were excited to see that all substrates showed high levels of regio and diastereo selectivity under these conditions. And after that, we decided to dive into the mechanistic studies to understand the observed regio diversions under different catalytic conditions. For that, first we focused on the 2-3 rearrangement. The first thing we wanted to see was whether it went through a traditional concerted rearrangement pathway or a stepwise mechanism. For that, we performed a crossover experiment with a mixture of two different indoor substrates under the optimized conditions and we did not observe any crossover products under these conditions supporting a concerted pathway. And our next question was whether or not the rhodium was actually involved in the rearrangement step. So when we did the 2-3 rearrangement in presence of a chiral rhodium catalyst, we actually observed a little bit of inactive selectivity. So it's possible that the 2-3 rearrangement takes place through a metal-associated adult. But at the same time, since the formation of the oxonium elite already generates a stereocenter at the oxygen, it's possible that the enantio determining step is the elite formation, and that the pathway where the rhodium dissociates to give a free elite could still give an enantio enriched product. Since both these pathways seemed feasible, we decided to get more insights into the mechanism through computational studies. And based on the DFT studies performed by the Tantino lab at UC Davis, 
The proposed mechanistic pathway is summarized in this slide. All the computational models predicted to favor a pathway where the rhodium catalyst dissociates to generate the free elid. Such early dissociation of rhodium to free elids has also been shown previously in other diazocarbonyl mediated reactions. From the free elid that is formed, the 2 3 rearrangement can proceed through either an exo or endo transition state, and in our case, it was shown that the exo transition state was more energetically favorable, giving the anti diastereomer consistent with our experimental results. Now coming to the mechanism of the 1-2 rearrangement, since a concerted 1-2 rearrangement is a symmetry forbidden process, we did a similar crossover experiment to get evidence for a stepwise pathway either through radical or ionic intermediates. But interestingly, we did not observe any crossover under the copper catalyzed conditions. We also did a radical trap experiment where we put a cyclopropane group on the indoor substrate to trap any radical intermediate that is formed by fragmentation of the ilid. But again, we did not see any evidence for ring opening product to support a radical mechanism. So again, we took the help of our computational collaborators to look at possible pathways. And their studies seem to favor a mechanism that goes through a solvent caged ion pair that is formed by the fragmentation of the copper-associated ilot. In theory, this could equilibrate with other ion pairs that can lead to the undesired 2-3 rearrangement products. However, based on the DFT studies, we believe that the recombination of the ion pair in the solvent case is faster than the equilibration between them to give the observed 1-2 rearrangement product. After that, we were interested in looking into the potential synthetic applications of the rearrangement products. We can do several synthetic transformations on the 2-3 product to other functionalized indole compounds. We were able to show some selected examples through bromination, acid-mediated rearomatization, and ozonolysis to access these different useful building blocks. And for the synthetic applications of the 1-2 rearrangement product, we targeted the total synthesis of sorazolone B, which is a tetrahydrocarbazole natural product isolated in 2016. Although the biological activity of this molecule has not yet been reported, it belongs to a family of several bioactive natural products. And we were mostly intrigued by the structure that we were able to easily map onto our 1-2 rearrangement product. So we did a quick retrosynthetic analysis of the molecule and saw that it can be formed by the cyclization of this preparatory alcohol, which can easily be formed in a few steps from the 1-2 rearrangement product. So we started with the 1-2 rearrangement, which worked very well on a gram scale. From there, we formed this wind-up amide in three steps, which was converted to this propargyl alcohol with two sequential grenade additions with excellent dextrose selectivity as confirmed by the crystal structure. From that intermediate, demethylation and a gold catalyzed cyclization gave the proposed structure of Suraz B. But once we synthesized it, we realized that the spectral data of the synthesized compound did not match with that of the isolation paper. So we wondered whether somehow the structure of the molecule was misassigned during isolation. Luckily, we were able to use the same synthetic route to synthesize the other diastereomer of the molecule by switching the order of the grignard additions, and the spectral data of this compound matched exactly with that of the reported data. So taking advantage of our methodology, we were very excited to be able to do the first total synthesis as well as structural reassignment of this natural product. In summary, we have developed a catalyst-controlled approach to do regiodiversion rearrangements of ILIDs in indole systems. While the copper catalyst promotes a regioselective 1-2 rearrangement, a rhodium catalyst was shown to do a regio and diastereoselective 2-3 rearrangement. We did experimental and computational studies to analyze the divergent mechanistic pathways for the two rearrangement processes. And we also showed the synthetic utility of the two rearrangements by functional group transformations, as well as the total synthesis of the natural product Surazolone B, which enabled its stereochemical reassignment. And with that, I would like to thank Uttam, my PhD advisor and mentor who has provided me with all the support and guidance throughout my research my thesis committee members, and all current and former group members, and our collaborators from the Tantillo lab who helped with the computational studies. And finally, I would like to thank Matt and the Synthesis Workshop once again for this wonderful opportunity.
Thank you for tuning in for this Research Spotlight episode, and thank you very much to Vaishnavi for joining us today to share your work. If you enjoyed the episode, you can support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, or by giving us a shout out on social media. Feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.